Scotty, what, well, how, how would you define passion? Well, passion is something that I think is internal. It's something that, that it, it moves you a little bit. It's something from your heart that you feel strongly about, okay? And you can even ask questions to kind of get to that is, you know, what is it that, that burdens you to a certain extent, that, that keeps you up at night? That would be something that you're passionate about. Like for, for me right now, one of my passion points is developing leaders. I'm super passionate about what can I do to pour in to help people develop in their leadership. It's something that I think about when I'm reading, I'm thinking in light of how can this help someone else? So it's something that, and it's contagious too. People can pick up quickly if you're passionate about something or not. Okay, yeah, that's awesome. I, man, that's like, I, I agree. Um, th there's energy that permeates from somebody who, who just, you, you see the flow and you see their enthusiasm, their lights, their eyes sparkle, they light up and there's this glow around them. So yes. yeah, you're right. I've had people say to me, I may not agree with you yeah. in principle, but I can't argue with your passion, right? That's right. And people need to pick up on that because if, if you're not passionate about it, it's hard to get other people passionate about it. Okay. The next question is, you know, people want, you know, a lot of people wander around the world and they try to wander, literally wander, and they're trying to find their purpose. And how do you clearly define what your purpose is? What is um, a few steps that you, you take to go, this, this is my purpose, this, these things are, you know, how would you, how do you, how do you answer That's that? probably one of the most difficult questions to answer because it's not a cookie cutter. Everybody's a little bit different there. And again, I would just start with, you know, it, it, again, passion and purpose somewhat work together. You know, going back to what do you really enjoy doing, and what if, what if people confirmed in you? You know, if you say my purpose is again, I'm about five foot nine and a half. So if I said my purpose is to play in the NBA basketball, probably not going to happen, right? So you know, it's got to be realistic to think of what are you specially gifted about, what are you passionate about. And what are you somewhat wired to do? You know, for me, it's encouraging and empowering others to live, lead, and finish well. Now, listen, I didn't figure that out when I was 20 years old. It was probably when I was in my 40s, but it was a process over time. And then you start making decisions on where you spend your time. How does this help me to accomplish my pur purpose? And purpose and mission are very similar. I'm on a mission to empower people, to encourage people to live and, and lead well. So that's that's kind of how I would do that. But there's a lot behind that. And we've got a large chapter in the book that details that somewhat. Okay, awesome. I needed to write, I should have wrote that down. I should have had a pen. And been <laughs> 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 anyway, <laughs> that's awesome. Okay, and the, ex the other part, they said somebody a long time ago told me everything has potential. A rock, even a rock has potential, right? So how would you, how would someone realize their potential, realize it and, and bring it to life? Yeah. Well, think about, and sometimes potential can be a word that people can get confused with a little bit. Yeah. Again, when you're, you're 20 or 25 years old, you're probably hearing more of, you do have the potential. I want to be able to hear that from me in my 50s, that there's still upside for me. And I would look at that as growth trajectory. Kind of where are you, and is there still upside for you, right? And that's that potential piece. It's where you are to that growth trajectory, where you can be. That's that potential piece. Okay. And part of that potential would be how do you maximize that would be your willingness will, really to pay the price of are you studying? Do you have a mentor? You know, I still listen to three or four podcasts every week. I read 40 to 50 books a year. That is helping me to stretch, to grow, to reach my growth trajectory my potential. Uh, you know, uh, spending time with other leaders, iron sharpening iron, all of those. I could give you 20 things that will help you to move toward your growth trajectory, but that's part of your potential. The potential is where you are, where you can be. The potential is the gap between there. Okay. That's excellent. That's excellent information. Um, Thank you. Seriously, it's like, all right, that's your, you have these people challenging you throughout life and, and you're seeing a gauge from where you were five years, three years ago, five years ago, and then you see where you're at now and see yeah. if you've transformed to some, something greater than yeah. what you and, were. And hopefully you can always look back on your life and say, I'm further along now than I was a year ago. If not, you've not, you've not moved the needle in your growth trajectory. Perfect. And then the last one is persistence. What do you mean by persistence? Yeah. Impor improve, your per improve persistence. Well, uh, sometimes my parents would refer to me as being stubborn. I always like to say, no, it's really more persistence. It's, it's, you don't quit 
when it gets hard. And one of the things I've found in life, the, the more you have invested in something, the harder it is to quit. When there's little invested, it's easy to quit. So part of being a persistent per uh, person is how much have you paid toward that in your study? If you're a football player, if you're not practicing and you're not working out to get better, it's easy to quit. But when you've been doing summer workouts and training and practicing four hours a day, you're going to be less likely to quit. So it's persistence is when you persist when it's easy to quit. You push through that. And a lot of times I've found in life, success is right around the corner. And we quit so many times when it's right around the corner. And in some ways, Angela Duckworth, Dr. Duckworth wrote a great book called Grit. And it's really the marriage of passion and persistence together. And that's what gives us grit. Great word, by the way. Yeah, awesome. OK. Where's, oh, I have it right here. OK. Um, this is yours. Yes. Um, Tell us a little bit about your book and the program, and then um, let everybody know how you can how they can get so, it. So the Quest of the Keys book, this is actually a novel fantasy fiction book that teaches these eight uh, keys, and four of those would be the intrinsic characteristics, and four are what they fall into, the extrinsic life skills. I'm not going to detail all eight of those, but we teach those, and we've taught these eight principles and keys. We've taught them in Fortune 500 companies, and we've taught them in schools. But what we've done differently in the book is that we've, done, we've taught the keys through a narrative. So, so now for a young person, they may get bored or in, uninterested in learning the, the three points behind passion, but they want to know about the character. How are, how are things going to turn out for Declan in the end, right, or one of the other characters? They'll follow along in a story form. Story is how we can best learn. So that's, that's the foundational piece is the book. Someone can just take this book by itself and learn a tremendous amount. But we have lots of supplemental uh, curriculum, videos, and other resources that go along with the book. So we're teaching this and using this in schools you know, all over the country, from Washington State to Florida and wow. almost every state in between. Again, we're still in maybe a classroom here or there. We want to be in, we'd love sure. to be in every classroom in the country, but we're slowly and surely getting there. So you've got the book, and that can come in audio book, an e-book, and also a paperback. And then we have curriculum and training videos that go along with that. Very cool. And how can, how, where, where can they get this book? Or so here's what I suggest to you. If you're interested in just getting the book, you can go to Amazon, and you can get a paperback, an e-book, or you can get a fantastic, well-done audio book, so if you prefer that. If you want to learn more about the program and how you can bring that to your school or even your company where I come in and do a workshop, you can go to questthekeys.com. You can learn a lot more information. And you can also fill out the contact information, and then we'll make sure someone contacts you from our organization quickly. Scotty, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us. We're really excited about the potential of having it in the classroom. We, we, we want to see that potential realized, and we want to do anything we can to assist you in that. And also, um, guys, if you, if, you're, if you have a willingness to grow in, internally and, and permeate it externally, this, this is a fantastic, fantastic book. I'm going to be putting everything, all the information on how you can get this book on, on, onto this video. So please take a look at it and reach out to Scotty. And um, then also there's this amazing book, The Guardian of Light. This is, this is a prequel to, to that that his, his wife wrote. And... They're onto something fantastic, and we look forward to seeing um, it manifest in something omnipresent.